our company is called Neurogym Technologies. We manufacture a line of mobility enabling tools for people with movement disorders. The tools enable the training of with all aspects of mobility, strength, balance, and coordination. Today is an instructional video on one of those pieces of equipment called the Sit to Stand Trainer. All our products have the same theme. They create unique environments where people can execute a functional task over and over, which would otherwise be unsafe or dangerous to do. This is in line with the evidence, the current evidence in rehab that says for the best outcomes, the training has to be both functional and intense. And we'll show you today what functional and intense training looks like for somebody who can't lift their bottom off the chair or have great difficulty standing. We've seen dramatic improvements in outcomes with these tools, whether it be reflected in reduced stay days in convalescent care or subacute rehab, or in improved transfer status in long-term care, going from a two-person transfer to a one, or a one-person to an independent transfer, or at very minimum, a safer transfer. This is the sit to stand trainer. It's not a transfer tool. A lot of people think it's a transfer tool because it's called sit to stand. Uh, it's an active training tool, and as with all our products, it creates an environment where you can successfully execute a standing and sit down function with a number of aspects of the machine, which we'll show you. Your choices for people who can't stand now are you could do leg lifts with weights off the plinth, you could lift the plinth up so the person starts higher, you could put a therapy belt on them and schlep them to stand or you could have them in parallel bars or in a wall on a wall railing lifting themselves to stand. But none of those executes all the correct neurologic pathways required to stand. So we're going to show you today what functional and intense training looks like because you can go directly to a stand. Imagine if you could take me when I couldn't stand and actually do this over and over and over. So first, I'm going to run through a demonstration of putting a patient in the machine. I won't go into a lot of detail, I just want to show you what it looks like. Then after that, I'll take it apart to its different aspects, show you the adjustments in the machine, a variety of patient issues associated with putting people in. And then I'm going to go through four applications. And what I'd like you to do is stop the video after each four and swap clinician for patient. The best way for you to learn is you have, in your sit to stand trainer, have somebody being a patient, somebody being a clinician, and want, run through each of these applications and then just change it up after each one. Okay, so I'm going to bring the patient in. And lock the wheels. take the sling and I'll ask you to put your hands up here if you can okay we'll talk about arms later now this patient can't lift her bottom off the chair so I'm going to tuck it down as far as I can and I get her to move a bit to the left and scooch and a bit to the right and scooch I'll show you a couple of tricks too associated with this you can sit back now and then I'll grab the two rings and connect the weights We always connect 40 pounds, and I'll explain why in a minute. And I'm going to engage the weights. You'll see the patient sitting back. And put your hands up here if you can. Okay. And try not to pull so much, but come halfway up and slowly. And then back down. Try again. Okay, one more time. Okay, perfect. You can put your hands down. So that's what it looks like. So now let's start breaking it down to the different functions and show you the different adjustments of the machine. So we're going to move the patient back for a sec. And I'm going to take out the sling. OK. So first of all, there's locks. These are standard locks for any medical type piece of equipment. You flip them up to open them down to lock. They're locked about 90% of the time and I'll show you some applications where they're not. There's three adjustment knobs, and they all work the same. There's a large round circle here 
that is only meant to be a half a turn one way or another, either to loosen or tighten. And then there's a plunger on top that enables the piece to slide. And then as it slides, the piece locks back in. So this is, I'd like you to try this if you can. So try moving the knee pad back and forth. Okay. Then the second knob is one that controls the height of the knee pad. So it could move up or down. And we'll show you once we move the patient back in what the appropriate height is. But as long as you know, you can slide it up and down. And by the way, it's easier to move it when you hold it by the adjustment knob here and under this part to lift it up and down. And then the third moves the handlebars up and down. So those are the three main adjustments. You can stop the tape now and you can try those if you like. A weight, weight pin, which is pretty straightforward. We always start with 40 pounds, and the reason is we don't know the person's ability to stand. So the correct weight is a combination of their ability to stand and their weight. So we know their weight, but we don't know exactly how strong they are. So we always start with 40 pounds. And this is called a Petzl. If any of you have done any mountain climbing, you'll know this device is called a Grigri. And this is the lever that opens. It automatically locks when there's stress on it. But when you lift it up, it releases. So that's how you um, release the weights. And we'll show you that in a second. So that's the machine. As far as the other pieces, this is a sling. And this sling comes standardly with the equipment. You'll notice there's a shiny side and a dull side. The dull side goes to the patient. You also should see some inner thigh straps dangling down. And they're designed to, if you're worried that the strap's going to come up, you reach between and you Velcro it across. Most times you don't have to worry about that, but if there's no bottom there or for whatever reason, and I'll show you one application later, um, it could slide up like this. The next piece is this. This is called a bariatric extender. So all this does is give you a few more inches of girth. A lot of people ask, what is the weight restriction on the machine? It's not a weight restriction, but it's a girth restriction. If I can't put the rings together, I obviously can't train. But with this, it buys you another 18 inches of girth. Okay? Uh, if that's not enough, and, and by the way, typically that's around 300 pounds. Because people's body types are very different around the middle, um, we're guessing it's going to be about 300 pounds until you need this. And this is the special bariatric sling. Okay? We've had people over 600 pounds in this machine, by the way. Because, again, we're not lifting them. It's not a weight limitation. It's a girth limitation. Okay, so the first thing you want to do is put the patient in the machine. So we're going to wheel our patient up. And then remember to lock the wheels of the wheelchair and the sit-to-stand trainer should be locked. The knee pad should be just below the patella and the tibia should be angled back a little bit. And typically for most people, you should have the pad so you just see the chrome. We'll show you some applications where you would, you would have something more than that, but right now it's just there. Okay? Now, I'm gonna run through four, uh, actually, I'll keep going. So let me show you, I'll put her in generically and then we'll go through the four applications. So, I'd like you to put your hands here if you can. Okay. And with the shining shot or the shining part back, I'm going to slide it down, just tucking between her bum and the chair. And then you're going to get her to lean if she can. If she can't, one thing you can do is take away, roll back the armrest, and do a scooch like that. So my left hand is here between her bottom and the and the sling, and I'm pulling it, and then go back this way. We get it to this position. Okay, so you can sit back and we'll put the arm right back. Okay, so we're going to connect the carabiner to the two rings. And I'm going to engage my 40 pounds, instructing the patient to sit back and relax. Now, proper pulling, most of you are going to be able to do that with this weight. And typically it's between 30 and 50 pounds. The most I've ever seen is 
80 pounds with that a woman who was 620 pounds. That's the most I've ever seen. So typically you should be much less than that. But if you have trouble, you'll notice the angle of my back. I'm, I'm leaning backwards and I'm just keeping my elbows straight and I'm just leaning back. So I'm using the body mechanics to pull and engage the weights. And I'm bringing it down so that the petzl is a few inches from the knot. We want the weights high enough so that when the patient stands up, the top stack doesn't touch the bottom stack. Okay, so she's ready to train. We'll put her hands up here, both hands. Now a couple things to watch. Most important for you, this is a perfect position for the clinician on a therapy stool just to the person's side. You want to watch the ankles. You want to make really sure that the ankles are straight. If you're standing somebody who hasn't stood in a while, their ankles are weak. If they roll over and stand up, you could have a problem. So watch the ankles. You want to keep the knees perpendicular to the pad. That's really important. Sometimes if people have a, a weak leg, you can put a therapy ball between to make sure that the, the knees are, are perpendicular to the pad. And so the next part is really important, and that's the instructions of halfway up and slow with your hand on her shoulder. Because if she's not used to the machine, and she stand, fires her thighs like she normally does, she could fire into hyperextension, which we don't want. So you have your right arm around her shoulder, your left arm here on the sling, and the instructions are halfway up and slow. Halfway up and slow. And if she goes up too fast, I can stop her, just like this. So try it again. Come on up. And then down. Okay, so now that she feels it, we can do some more training, but if she couldn't make it up, if she wasn't strong enough, we'd give her another weight plate. If that was too easy for her, we would take a weight plate off. And so, so you can feel dramatically what it's like, what I'd like you to do now is put your hands down in your lap, okay? And now try to stand. And go back down. And so we can cue her now, lean forward, lean forward, now come up. And so I can quite easily take a very large person and cue them. Remember at the beginning I talked about balance, strength, and coordination. It's the timing of the thighs. And again, going straight to function. Rather than strengthening her quads or getting her to pull up, she's executing all the correct neurologic pathways required to stand, okay? And also working on the timing, okay? Now, to discuss a little about hands. The reason we put hands up here are for two reasons. To encourage nose over toes, but also to give her something to balance on when she comes up. If you decide clinically that you don't want to do that, you could put your hands on the armrests and stand up this way. Like stand up, and then bring your hands up to here. Keep coming. Now reach back blind with both hands. Okay, come back down and try it again. Come on up. Put both hands up here, and now reach back with both hands at the same time blind. There you go. Okay, so we're teaching the skill and the confidence of getting in and out of a wheelchair, which is fine. But you can also change it up and say, let's really focus on the quads now. So hands in the lap, and then come on up. And now it's all quads, okay? And lean forward, and come up. So you can see I can continue working on the coordination and the body mechanics of standing. Now, because the hands here, as we said, for two reasons, nose over toes, and give her something to balance, but she's pulling too much. Here's a trick. So put your hands over top of my hands. Now don't squeeze my hands when you come up. Go back down. And I'd like you to lean forward a little bit now. There we go. And I can feel she's barely touching my hands. So it's a really nice way of judging how much they're pulling. Again, because what we're, what we're trying to do is create a situation where she can stand regardless. Now, there's three things that are helping a patient here. You'll notice that she's pinned at the knees. So catapulting over the knees assists. There's arms here, so pulling at the arms can help. And there's also weights. Clinically, you can take apart, you can take away or reduce any of those. So as she starts getting stronger, we're gonna reduce the weights. Or weight, we can, you saw her doing it without hands, or we could take away the knee pad. But remember, the whole premise of this is functional and intense training. So clearly, you can see the function. We take her all the way to function, regardless of what that takes. And a great example is that woman who was 620 pounds that hadn't stood in four years. She was able to execute a squat, but she needed 80 pounds of counterbalance, she needed the knee pads, and she had to pull. But she was able to execute that function. Okay, so what I'd like to do now is show you quickly about how to disengage the weights. 
So with the free end of the rope, you're going to hold with one hand and you're going to lift up this lever. So this lever, when you lift it like this, it enables you to release the weights. And I'll show you that again. And I'd like you to stop the video a few times and try this on your own. So you're going to, I'm lifting up on this lever and controlling the descent of the weights with my other hand. Okay? And then we can change to take more or less weights. Okay? So that's basically how the machine works and a couple of issues associated with patients, with a generic patient. So now I'm going to walk you through four applications. Four applications. And the first one is going to be a large um, cognitively impaired individual, could be a mechanical lift. The second one will be a hemiplegic patient. The third one will be a person who uh, has trouble with that landing the last 15 or 20 degrees. And the last one is teaching someone how to get up off the floor if they have a fall at home. Okay, so first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to bring the wheelchair back a bit, like this. And I'm going to bring the knee pad out. Okay, I'm going to bring it out so that there's three holes showing. And you'll see why in a minute. I'm going to bring the... I'm going to have to bring this down because remember I want the pad just slightly below the patella. And the further out it is, the higher it is. Remembering to lock boat brakes. Okay, so this patient is a very large cognitively impaired patient. We have the knee pad back. We may have the bariatric sling if she's quite large, but in this case, this sling is fine. And we're going to engage a little more weights than we normally did. Remember when I said you're going to start with 40 pounds? Because that's nominally where we would start and then you can adjust from there. But we're going to give this person 50 pounds, and you'll see why in a minute. And so, watch the body mechanics again. Straight, notice my elbows are straight, and I'm just pulling like this. Okay? And you want the pencil to be about two or three inches from the knot. Now, with this person, we're going to ask them if they can to put their hands up here. Okay? And grab. Now, you'll notice that we have her in a much more vulnerable position for sit to stand. So these are people that stand like this. Put your hands down for a second. And try to stand with the classic straight back. Okay? People that do this. This is very difficult and unsafe, and it's not even close to function. So when we set this machine up, and remember we said we create unique environments so that people can execute functional tasks over and over? Here's our unique environment. She, you know, she's in a much more vulnerable position for sit to stand. Now, she doesn't understand the command to stand. So, with the added weights, if you'll notice, my right hand is on her shoulder and my left hand is here on the strap, and I'm just tugging just a bit to give her the inclination to stand so she feels the relief in her hips, and now she doesn't understand the command to sit down, so I'm tugging a bit here, and then I'm pulling a bit and tugging a bit. So you see how I can get her to start doing that functional task over and over and over, and you'll be surprised how quickly they, they kind of get it after that. And then it's a numbers game. So you try to do how many you can do. You can do three sets of 10. You can start experimenting with how many they could do in a minute. Sit back for a sec. A couple of other hints on cognitively impaired patients. If they're afraid, which sometimes they are, let them watch as somebody else is in the machine being successful. Let them watch two or three people before you. And then, so that they know what it looks like. And when you put them in the machine, try putting on some music. Stay close to them, rub their shoulders and talk to them. And if you can calm them down enough to try it, it's been our experience that we've had great success with people who otherwise you wouldn't think of standing because they're either too large or they don't understand commands. Okay, so now's a pretty good time to stop the video and then swap one clinician out for the next clinician so you have a new patient and a new clinician for application number two, and that's a hemiplegic patient. Okay, so this person is left side affected hemiplegic. I'm going to bring the pad in a bit. 
and I'm gonna bring her up so she's right up against the pad, remembering to lock the brakes again. I'm gonna engage a little more weights than I normally would with her, because what we're gonna do is a one-legged squat on her affected side. So, remember, she is left side affected, and what I'm gonna do is take a stool and put it under her right foot, to take her right leg out of the equation. I'm gonna move the handlebars up higher than normal. And, and by the way, the typical height of the handlebars is usually about eye height. It's not absolutely critical, but typically it would be a little lower than this. But for this patient, I wanna have it a little higher and you'll see why. So remember, she's right, left side affected. And you wanna make sure her heel's on the ground and the tibia are angled slightly backwards, and we're gonna engage the weights. And remember, the patient is sitting back when you're engaging the weights, so. Okay, now we're gonna have her good hand up here. Or, sorry, thank you. So her good hand, her right hand's here. And now, slowly, you'll notice I have my arms here and I'm, and I'm cueing a bit. Come halfway up, and then back down and they can feel the focus on the affected side. So now this patient walks around, she ambulates just fine, but she's weak on the, right, on the left side. So we're able to actually do intense functional training on that, on that left side. So now on this, on this one, she's gonna come up, and we're gonna take the affected arm and put it up here, and then come halfway down and slow. Can you see what we did there? We just added range of motion of the affected shoulder. Another key objective for somebody who's hemiplegic. Okay, and come back down. Okay, what we're gonna do now is do a little weight bear on the affected side. So now put your good arm up and come on up. Okay, and I'm gonna hold her on the shoulder and just get her to lean a bit this way and back. Lean a bit this way and back. So we're just doing a little weight there on that affected side. Okay, and then back down. And back down. Okay, and remember when you release, you lift up on the lever, the free end of the rope goes down, and you have to have all the tension off the rope before you can change the weights. Okay, so we're gonna move to application number three, and that's for a plopper. So, this patient ambulates around the facility okay, but they just have trouble with those last 15 degrees. I'm gonna select 40 pounds for this. I'm gonna move this guy out of the way. Okay, so I've engaged, oops, 40 pounds is, actually, I'm gonna engage 30 pounds. You'll see why in a minute. Okay, so remember, she's a plopper, high-level patient. Okay, put your hands here, and come on up. Okay, and put your hands just in your lap, just like this. Yep. And now put your bottom, go down, put your bottom about three inches above the chair, and hold. Okay, so you can count to 20, get her to go down another, and count to 10. And she can feel her quads firing. Now, if she's one of those people, have a straight back a little more, like this, that's agony. So you can cue her to lean forward like this, and she feels the immediate relief in her quads. And you can go down now, okay? And then come up a little bit and hold, okay? So you're really working on the landing muscles, and you'll see quite a difference in a person's ability to negotiate those last few degrees with this application. Okay, go back down. Okay. The last application is teaching somebody to get up off the floor after a fall. So obviously when you discharge somebody, you hope they don't have a fall, but if they do, giving them the skills to get off the floor, get up off the floor could be a lifesaver. And this is what it looks like. So put your hands here. And remember, this patient is pretty high level. They're walking around. Come on up. Okay, hold right there. And I'm going to move the wheelchair out of the way. And I'm going to take the inner thigh straps and Velcro them to the side. 
And remember, you can do this whenever you want, and you'll notice that you don't have to put on the Velcro um, straps while she's in the chair. You'd only do it after she stood up. But in this case, you'll see there's a potential for the sling to ride up. So I'd like you to put your left knee on the ground. Okay, and put both your hands on this pretend couch. Okay, and come on up. Okay, what I should have done first was, was check the knee, range of motion to the knee. Put your hands here and come all the way down with both knees touching. Down, 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 down. Keep going, keep going. And then up. Okay, so the range of motion of the knees are fine to do this. And then you would move to put your left knee down. Both hands down. And come on up. So let's do that a couple times. Up and down. Up and down. And now we're going to put both knees on the ground. So drop the right knee and sit back. She's had the fall. And we're going to move the pretend couch down as low as we can. And I'm here making sure that I'm guiding her so she doesn't fall over. We're going to crawl over to the couch and get that right knee up. And keep that heel on the ground. There we go. And come on up. Okay. And you do that over and over and over. Okay. Go back down. Oh, sorry. I guess one of the key things is always remember to bring the, the wheelchair back before you ask the patient to sit down. Okay, so just lean forward a bit, we're going to take out the sling. Okay, and we're going to take the patient back to their room because they're finished training for the day. First of all, in terms of contraindications, you want to watch the ankles. So if somebody has really bad ankles, they're very weak, be very careful. If they can't stand, if, they, if, they, if their ankle won't go in this position, don't put them in the machine. You should also think about the person should have ideally rubber soles, um, or at least Dyson on the floor. Sometimes in long-term care, people come in with socks with no skid bottoms. That's okay, but a piece of Dyson is fine. We've had some fun stories where um, people have found out that their, their elderly father needs a pair of running shoes and to see the look on their face when they realize their dad can't stand but needs a pair of running shoes is kind of fun. So watch those ankles. Um, complete paralysis of the lower extremities is, is very dangerous to train somebody. You have to be very, very careful um, training somebody like that or um, uh, severe anxiety over anything. People who are really afraid. Some of the key tricks there, I was talking about them earlier, is putting on a little music, let them watch first so that they can see, rubbing their shoulders, staying close to them are all strategies that can help you get that person to stand. Um, the, the other one would be a dominant sitting reflex. You have to be very careful with patients like this. And by the way, all these are mentioned on the card that comes standardly with the equipment. So, in summary, the, the sit-to-stand trainer can be used for uh, acute, subacute, uh, acute for, let's say, um, uh, early, or early mobility, uh, subacute uh, can be used in long-term care. Uh, some patients even have them in their homes. Um, what I'd ask you to do is, if, if this is in a long-term care facility, Ask the nurses if somebody has rolled off the ability to self-toilet in the last three or four months. Those are the people who are the low-hanging fruit. Because remember, what I mentioned at the beginning is we're all about outcomes and measured outcomes. Not so much about rehab minutes, but about rehab outcomes. We're looking for a change in the care plan. So if I lost the ability to self-toilet, a machine like this can help bring that back to me. And nothing, a story will go through a long-term care facility like wildfire when somebody relearns that ability to self-toilet. So try and make sure you're communicating with nurses to see if we can change that care plan. Um, if you have any other questions on our equipment, you could go to our website at www.neurogymtech.com. That's www.neurogymtech.com. You could call us. Uh, we have a toll-free number, 877-523-4148. 
877-523-4148, and we can help you. Um, on our website, there's uh, application notes, um, research studies, um, information on our other products, and a variety of testimonials. So I really appreciate the time today, and uh, have lots of fun with it. And please send us an email with how, you're go how it's going with you. We love to get stories. Thanks very much.